Hi, my name is Steve Foxworth and I am a member of the ELPO as well as an instructor and an examiner. And today we're going to go over and try to give you a study guide to help you prepare for the certifications that we have. The three certifications we have is a live sole hoof mapping certification, um, your barefoot trim certification, and then we will be going over your um, farrier or horseshoeing certification. In this demonstration, I will be going over the ELPO shoeing protocol. All of you will be receiving a green form or a green laminated sheet that has the 13 steps for the shoeing protocol that you will be graded on. So if you take this once again and you go over it and have it with you even before your exam and study it and use this protocol on each and every horse you shoe, at least for a couple weeks before you come, you should be fairly prepared uh, to take your certification. So you'll notice that the first part of the shoeing protocol is identical to the mapping protocol. So as you go through and do your certification, you need to do the exact same things as locating your dimple, recognizing the distortions exfoliating your foot and mapping it out. So now that we have our foot mapped out, the next step is to begin our trimming. And we will start with taking our nippers and going just behind the toe pillar with your leading edge. I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit. Uh, coming out of the foot and nippering just above your black line which should be your guide. You can see I've left my line here. We'll do the same thing on the opposite side. Nippering just above my line. It's very important that line is a, is a safety uh, mark. So once you have it mapped out, that should be just right above your or right along your sole plane. So now that we've prepared the heels, the next step is trimming around the toe. We'll start right where we left off, staying above the line still. And there is our rough trim before we start to rasp. Now that we have our rough trim, the next step is to rasp it flat. And it's very important that you get the back half of the foot first and your heels in position where you need them to be so that we don't take a risk of getting too close in the front part of the foot. So now that I've got the back half, I'll just run my rasp forward. Still leaving my line all the way around there. There's a safe clearance all the way around the foot. The last step will be pulling it forward and dressing it. And before I do that, I will give myself a guide and getting uniformed hoof wall thickness. So 
So you can see I've got a starting point so I don't go too far. What I'm looking for is to get a straight dorsal wall from here down. You can see this one has a little bit of a flare addition to it, but not really that much. Now that we have our foot trimmed, we're gonna go through and make a shoe selection. Now you can use any type of shoe you'd like, but it needs to fit these parameters. One, your toe pillars need to be covered. So this area or portion of your foot needs to have good coverage. This is a, an ot center fit. And as you can see, it might be a little bit too tight. A lot of the foot is hanging off here. And we have good uniform wall thickness, so we want this to fit that parameter fairly well. The second is, is that we want it to line up with the widest part of the foot, or fairly close to. As you can see, this one, actually, center fit, seems to cover the pillars much better, and it also has these marks line up fairly close, as well as having our shoe fit back to our dimple in the back part of our foot so that we can achieve um, more behind than there is in front, especially in a breakover. So you can do that with any type of shoe. You'll just need to make sure that you modify the toe, that the breakover fits your breakover line, and that the widest part of your shoe fits the widest part of your foot, and that there's ample coverage in your heels. So this particular shoe, we went with a size one center fit on this horse. You can see that the, uh, the front of the shoe meets the toe pillars. Um, the center or widest part of the shoe meets the widest part of the foot, and we've got good coverage over our heels in the back part of the foot. You want it to be fairly, fairly tight from here, from the toe back to the widest part of the foot, and you can have a little bit out from the widest part back. So this is what the foot or the shoe should resemble. Um, you can see I've got the widest part of the shoe uh, close to the widest part of the foot. My breakover is in line with my breakover line and my heels meet up with my dimple on the back part of my foot. Um, one of the last things that we need to really pay attention to is to make sure that our toe pillars are in line with our heels and that we're not, uh, our heels aren't kinked in further than where our toe pillar is. And as you can see, that toe and heel are lined up almost right on. So we have good symmetry 
in our, in our shoe and in our foot. So it's very important that your shoe is not kinked in either side. And then the other basic things that we need to pay attention to is make sure you have a fairly decent nail line and good clinches and that your shoe fits your foot. You don't have more hanging over. You can see it's fairly tight to the widest part of the foot and then slowly kind of comes out just a little bit.